Hi, welcome to this talk on scalable Sudorano quantum states. Uh, my name is Omri Shmueli, and this is joint work with Vika Brakiewski. And this work is going to focus on the efficient generation of quantum random states. And there's a basic fact in quantum information theory that efficiently generating a truly random quantum state is impossible. This follows because if we consider the space of all n qubit quantum states, uh, this space is infinite, but even if we discretize it to any negligible precision, the, then the, the number of points is going to be uh, too big, it's going to be super exponential, and we don't uh, have hope of efficiently sampling from it. And now, one known solution to this problem is aiming for a more modest goal, uh, namely uh, aiming to sample from a distribution such that for a bounded number of copies of the output state, uh, it is going to be indistinguishable from the same number of copies of a truly random quantum state. And indeed, this more modest approach has results. Uh, one kind of strategy is called the quantum state design. This is an efficiently sampleable, usually efficiently sampleable distribution, uh, where for an a priori known T number of copies, uh, an output state, a T copies of, the, of an output space of this distribution and T copies of a truly random quantum state are going to be statistically indistinguishable, which means that the trace distance is going to be uh, negligible. And another kind of strategy, uh, more recent, is called a pseudo random quantum state. This is again an efficiently sampleable distribution such that uh, this time for any polynomial uh, number of copies T, um, the output states, T copies of the output space and, and T copies of the truly random quantum state are going to be uh, computationally indistinguishable. This time, uh, the indistinguishability is going to hold only against polynomial time uh, quantum distinguishers. Now, let's define exactly uh, what are pseudo random quantum states. Uh, this notion was defined by Ji Liu and Song uh, for the first time uh, in uh, crypto 2018. So this is a quantum algorithm. Uh, the PRS generator is a quantum algorithm G. Uh, it gets two inputs. Uh, one is a parameter denoting the, the number of uh, uh, qubits in the output uh, uh, state. The other is a classical key. And the security guarantees the following. So for any polynomial, if we think of the output state of the generator for a, a classical random key, then uh, polynomially many copies of this, uh, of this state and polynomially many copies of a truly random quantum state are going to be indistinguishable for polynomial time quantum uh, distinguishers. And PRS generators have a few, uh, a few applications. Uh, some, uh, some of them are a simulation of uh, thermalized quantum states. Another uh, uh, application is uh, quantum money and these uh, PRS generators are known to exist based on uh, the existence of post-quantum one-way functions. Now, one property that, uh, that is present in all uh, PRS generators is that what we think of as the security parameter is the same number as the size of the output quantum state. Let's be more precise about this. So let's, let's recall for a moment the security definition of a PRS generator. So what we're seeing in, in red is what we think of as the security parameter, right? This is the number that denotes uh, how many copies we are going to give uh, uh, the adversary, we're going to let the adversary have, and also the number that denotes how hard is it going to be for the adversary to distinguish for, for this number uh, of copies uh, uh, between the output state of the uh, PRS and, the, uh, and a truly random quantum state. And what we're seeing in blue is, uh, is just the output, uh, the, the size of the output states of the, of the generator. And as we see, this is the same number. And what this essentially means from an operational point of view is that the more random the state is, the more we want to make it hard to distinguish this state from a truly random quantum state, we have to use more quantum memory. The state size grows. And the question that we are going to try and answer in this work is, can we create a small, highly pseudo-random state? Can we make the security parameter and the state size uh, independent of each other? 
So for this goal of uh, maintaining the independence between the security parameter and the state size n, we're going to define a scalable PRS generator. So this is, uh, again, an efficient quantum algorithm. This time, the security guarantee is going to be a bit different. Uh, the output state of the generator is going to be for any polynomial uh, number of copies indistinguishable from an n qubit quantum state, but um, the number of uh, the security parameter is, is going to determine uh, how many copies and also how hard is it going to be to distinguish from the same number of copies of an n qubit totally random quantum state. And a few words on previous works. So the, the lack of security parameter, the lack of this independence between the security parameter and the state size is something fundamental because previous PRS generators, they output a state which is essentially a uniform superposition. So the amplitude is stationary. This is just uniform. The, the vector, if you look at the vector that describes the quantum states, uh, all of the absolute values are the same. This is a square root of uh, 2 to the minus n. And the, ampli the, the phases are going to be pseudo-random. And if we're, uh, we're saying that uh, the, 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 the more, uh, the, the hardness of distinguishing between the PRS output and the truly random quantum state only grows with the state size, it is natural to ask what happens uh, on the opposite, on very small output sizes. For example, the smallest output size, one qubit. What is the performance for one qubit? And uh, these kind of uh, uh, distributions, which are uniform superpositions with uh, a pseudo-random or even completely random uh, phase, they actually cover only this red ring in the block sphere. And this is the reason that uh, they are very, very easy to distinguish from a truly random one qubit state, which covers the entire block sphere. So, as we understand, in order to get a scalable PRS generator, we cannot just randomize uh, the phases, we need to also randomize the amplitudes of the states that we are out. Okay, so uh, on to our results. Okay, so we define the, uh, we define and also explore this notion of scalability in the efficient generation of uh, quantum random states. And we show a framework, specifically we show a framework for constructing scalable uh, uh, random quantum uh, states. And more formally, we show two theorems. Uh, the first is uh, uh, given the existence of post-quantum uh, uh, one-way functions, we show scalable, that scalable PRS generators exist. In particular, uh, we use the same computational assumptions uh, needed for non-scalable PRS generators. And uh, also, unconditionally, we show that there exist uh, scalable T-design generators in depth uh, that is uh, improved from a polynomial in N, the security parameter in T, to polynomial in N, the security parameter and log of T for any polynomial T. So we improve the, the, the efficiency of uh, existing T design, uh, scalable T design generators, and we show the existence of scalable PRS generators for the first time. And in order to show these uh, two theorems, we, uh, we use the same paradigms as the uh, previous work, which is uh, first showing in what is called an asymptotically random state generator. So let's first define what is asymptotically random state. This is essentially like a pseudo-random quantum state, but where the distinguishability is statistical. So if we take uh, uh, the output state of an ARS, ARS is as short for asymptotically random state. So for any polynomial number of copies, this uh, uh, state is going to be uh, statistically distinguishable from the same number of copies of a truly random n qubit state. And the paradigm, this ARS paradigm uh, that appears in both uh, previous works is the following. This is uh, how we construct both PRS generators and uh, T-design generators. So the main technical point is constructing uh, an efficient quantum algorithm that when it has oracle, quantum oracle access, to a random classical function f, it generates an ARS, which means that if we sample f at random, then the output of the generator is going to be statistically indistinguishable from a truly random quantum state for any polynomial number of copies. 
And then when we have this uh, uh, ARS generator, we can take F, swap it with the quantum secure pseudo-random function, PRF, uh, in order to get a PRS. And if we want uh, to get out of this ARS generator, a P-design generator, we swap F with the two TYs independent function. So essentially, this is the way we can view ARS generators as the center for the efficient generation of uh, quantum random states. And this is going to be our focus in this work, um, in the technical part. That is. So we follow this ARS paradigm, but we uh, construct a scalable ARS generator, a, a scalable ARS generator, which means that uh, this efficient quantum algorithm now is going to get additional parameter, which is the security parameter. And this security parameter is going to determine how hard is it going to distinguish uh, uh, the output of the generator between a truly random quantum state and also how many uh, copies we let uh, the adversary have. And uh, accordingly, our main technical lemma is going to be uh, showing that there exists a scalable ARS generator uh, where the trace distance between the following two distributions is going to be bounded by T over E to the lambda, where these two distributions uh, are the following. The first is the output of the ARS generator, the scalable ARS generator, T copies of this quantum state, uh, versus T copies of a, a truly random n qubit state. And uh, one important thing about this uh, bound is that, of course, it is independent of n, which implies that. Uh, only the security parameter is going to control how hard is it going to distinguish from to the random quantum state. And we also improve the, 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 the bound uh, in terms of uh, the dependence on t because uh, we get a linear t uh, compared to a t squared from previous works. We now describe our construction of scalable asymptotically random state generator. So to be concrete uh, with what we want, we want a polynomial time quantum al algorithm that gets uh, n number of qubits, uh, lambda security parameter, it gets a quantum oracle access to a classical random function f from n bits to polynomial in n, n lambda number of bits, and it outputs an n qubit state psi. And the guarantee is that uh, when f is random, t copies of this uh, state is going to be highly indistinguishable from T copies of a truly random N qubit uh, quantum state. One thing that's going to help us uh, with intuition is the maybe the most basic uh, effect in uh, quantum information is that uh, the space of N qubit quantum states corresponds to the unit sphere of uh, in complex space of uh, two to the N dimensions. Now, our approach is going to be very natural and with, uh, with accordance to this, uh, to this uh, effect. Uh, we're going to attempt to sample a unit vector on the sphere just in a quantum state, and the security parameter is going to only increase the density on this uh, sphere of, uh, of all n qubit uh, quantum states. And the outline for implementing this approach is the following. So given the oracle access to this, the quantum oracle access to this classical function f, we want to transform it into oracle access to a different function uh, that describes a spherically symmetric vector v. Okay, we, we, where we mean a, a oracle access to the vector, this is a vector in two to the n dimensions, it has two to the n entries and, uh, and for input x, it is going to output the entry that corresponds to uh, the string uh, x. And this vector has to be spherically symmetric if f is random. And the second part in our uh, algorithm is going to be uh, to efficiently generate the quantum state that corresponds to the spherically symmetric uh, uh, vector v. So let's start with the, with the first part. We want uh, oracle access to a spherically symmetric vector, and we have oracle access to a random classical function f. And one thing that can solve this uh, first problem is that we, if, if we had a classical circuit uh, G that uh, uh, translates it uh, locally, which means that a G of f of x is going to be this vector v, such that when f is random, 
uh, doing this transformation with G on each of the coordinates of uh, F going to yield a spherically symmetric vector. And for this, for, for, to, to, to identify what uh, this uh, circuit uh, G needs to be, we, we recall a basic property of multivariate Gaussian distribution is that uh, it is spherically symmetric, which means if we take a vector with, uh, a, a, with many coordinates and each of the coordinates we sample from a Gaussian distribution independently, this vector is going to be uh, spherically symmetric. It's going to, a normalization of this vector is going to be a uniform unit, uh, unit vector. And this, this is, a, of course, a very known a property of the multivariate Gaussian distribution. It is very useful for uh, algorithms for uh, sampling uh, uh, random unit vectors because all of these uh, coordinates are going to be, can be sampled uh, uh, in parallel, independently of each other. And then only the norm of the vector needs to be computed and this also can be done in parallel. And while this property is very useful for the first uh, parallel generation of uh, a classical uh, unit vectors, we use it in the quantum setting to uh, generate it uh, efficiently. So this uh, classical circuit uh, G is going to be sampler circuit, the classical sampler circuit for the Gaussian distribution, which means that uh, we're going to think about the output of F as the randomness, the random tape for a, a classical sampling algorithm, and this algorithm is going to be sampler for the Gaussian distribution. We denote this algorithm with S. So V, the, the, the X coordinate of our vector V is going to be S, this, this sampler S applied to the randomness uh, F of X. And one technical uh, uh, detail to, uh, to recall is that uh, S has to be an efficient in particular a polynomial size a classical circuit, and it cannot really sample from the continuous Gaussian distribution. It has to sample from a discrete Gaussian distribution, but we're going to leave this technical detail for the, for the full version for the paper. And this, this, uh, in this presentation, we're going to assume that the uh, S uh, sample from the continuous Gaussian uh, distribution. Okay, so, it seems we solved our uh, first problem. Uh, we have Oracle access, quantum Oracle access to a spherically symmetric vector uh, V. And uh, now we want to generate the quantum state that corresponds to the normalization of V. And this, this general task of getting Oracle access to the description of a quantum state and then generating the quantum state is we don't have efficient algorithms uh, for this general task, but of course we don't have the general case here. We have a, a restricted case where our vectors are a, a Gaussian vectors, and we're going to attempt to find properties of the multivariate Gaussian distribution that are going to be helpful uh, in the efficient generation of the quantum state that corresponds to V. For this uh, task of generating the quantum state this corresponds to uh, the, the vector uh, V, we first uh, recall a, a quantum algorithm for the generation of uh, quantum states. This uh, algorithm is called the quantum rejection sampling. It is the quantum analog of a classical rejection sampling. And the setting is as follows. So we have one a quantum state alpha and we want to transform it to another quantum state beta. And additionally to having a alpha, we have a, a classical, we have Oracle access, quantum Oracle access to a classical transformation circuit F. Now, this circuit F outputs the ratio a beta over alpha times a, a number one over D for some number D, which is an upper bound. Now, this upper bound is an upper bound on M where M is the maximal a ratio between the coordinates, between all of the coordinates of beta and alpha. And if we have this circuit F and D is uh, where it uh, outputs a, a beta over alpha times one over D, we can generate a beta with probability one over D squared. So the intuition is the important part uh, behind quantum rejection sampling. And it says that if we have a state alpha, 
where all of its coordinates are roughly the same as uh, uh, another quantum state beta, and we also know the ratios in all of the coordinates by some classical circuit F, we can generate beta with some good probability. Okay, so in our case, if we take the quantum ejection sampling to our setting, we know what is the target uh, vector that we are aiming for. Our beta is the normalized V. We want to generate a quantum state that corresponds to the normalization of V. Now, we have beta, but we don't have yet a suitable alpha. Alpha needs to be a quantum state that we know how to efficiently generate from scratch, not using a quantum ejection sampling. And even if we, in, in addition to alpha, we also need to know what is the circuit F that is going to output uh, the ratio between beta and uh, alpha times the bound one over D. Recall that we don't even have beta yet. We have only the unnormalized version of beta. We don't have the normalized V because in order to compute the norm of V, we need to know all of the coordinates of V and this uh, seems to take uh, exponential time. So what properties of the Gaussian distribution are going to be useful to us uh, for the quantum efficient generation of the state uh, uh, normalized V? So the first property, again, this, these are very uh, basic properties. We just observe that they are useful for the efficient generation of the quantum states that corresponds to Gaussian vectors. And the first property is that uh, if we take a random Gaussian vector of two to the n coordinates, two to the n dimensions, uh, with overwhelming probability, with probability one minus uh, e to the uh, minus uh, lambda, all coordinates are bounded by a square root of uh, n plus lambda. This, this, uh, this is true by union bound because the, the probability to, for each of the coordinates to pass this bound, this is relatively a small bound, is so, so much tiny compared to the number of coordinates, which is two to the n. Now, uh, this means, th this like last uh, sentence is very, uh, only on the intuitive level, is that all of the amplitudes of this uh, vector v are roughly the same when they are compared to the norm. So the, the, the differences between each pair of uh, coordinates is relatively nothing compared to the huge norm of this vector. Uh, this means intuitively again that uh, this vector really resembles a, a vector where all of the amplitudes are the same. And a vector where all of the amplitudes are the same is simply the uniform superposition. And what is fantastic about the uniform superposition is that this is a quantum state that we already know how to efficiently generate from scratch. So we're going to take alpha to be the uniform superposition, the plus to the end state. And if we take alpha to be the, this uh, uniform superposition, we can take uh, our uh, classical uh, transformation circuit F to be uh, the, the X entry of uh, V times one over square root of N plus lambda. Now, why we chose these uh, exact parameters? So let's observe that uh, if we look at the ratio uh, beta over alpha, we know that beta now is the normalized uh, V and alpha, we also know what is alpha. This is uh, simply the uniform superposition. We know that uh, because of the first property, uh, all of the coordinates of uh, V are going to be bounded by square root of uh, N plus uh, uh, lambda, uh, which means that Rd is going to be square root of two to the N times square root of uh, N plus lambda, all of this divided by the norm of V. And by choosing these parameters, we, we guarantee that uh, f of x is indeed one over d times uh, beta over alpha. And this is all great, uh, and all our parameters are fixed, but we recall that the success probability of quantum ejection sampling is one over d squared. So essentially we need, in order for this probability to be noticeable, we need d to be polynomial. And uh, this comes down to, the norm of the vector v being very big, being like uh, on the order of square root of two to the n. And this is where the, 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 another property of the Gaussian distribution uh, kicks in uh, to help us is that the uh, Gaussian vector of two to the n dimension has this, uh, say, uh, square root of two to the n uh, over two 
has this norm at least with over one probability, with one minus e to the minus uh, two to the n. And we know that uh, uh, now our vector with over one probability is going to be large enough, which means that uh, d is going to be small enough and the rejection sampling success probability is going to be uh, noticeable. And because we can regenerate uh, uh, alpha every time we try, we can try polynomially many times, and with overwhelming probability in polynomial time, uh, uh, manage to successfully uh, uh, generate the state uh, V, the quantum state that corresponds to V. Now, uh, one small technical problem that I uh, kind of uh, hid under the rug is that uh, this concentration bound on uh, that tells us that uh, the vector V is going to be have a large enough norm, this concentration bound kicks in only uh, for large enough N. Right, we want, to, we want our construction to work even for uh, N equals one, and for n equals one, this uh, one minus e to the minus two to the n is not a large enough probability. This is just a constant probability. And uh, our solution to this is that uh, this, this concentration bound on the multivariate Gaussian distribution is so, so, so successful. Uh, and even in the exponent, we have a two to the n. So this concentration kicks in already when n is at least log of lambda. Uh, and then we have my one minus uh, e to the minus lambda, which is good enough, which is overwhelming probability in the security parameter, which is what we want essentially. And in this like uh, extreme case where n is smaller than the log of the security parameter, we can just sample the entire vector because we can run in two to the n time, which is polynomial time in lambda, and just sample, explicitly sample the entire classical description of this uh, n qubit state and, uh, and generate it inefficiently in n, but uh, efficiently in lambda. And to conclude, uh, this is our uh, algorithm for the scalable ARS uh, generator uh, for the regular case where uh, lambda is bounded by two to the n. Uh, our first step uh, is to transform this uh, uh, oracle axis to f to oracle axis to a spherically symmetric uh, vector and then to a unit vector. And our second step is to iterate polynomial many times uh, and try to do quantum rejection sampling that we know is going to be successful by some concentration properties of the multivariate Gaussian distribution. And then generate the quantum state that corresponds to the spherically symmetric uh, vector V. And for the restricted case of a, a of the security parameter being huge compared to the, to the number of uh, output, uh, the size of the output state, uh, we know that we can explicitly sample the classical, the entire classical description of, uh, of the quantum state uh, uh, that we want to output and generate it inefficiently in the state size, but efficiently in the security parameter. And this uh, concludes our talk. Thank you very much for listening.